Let's look at another example of finding a basis for some subspaces so we can describe them. Here we have a couple of subsets of R4, H and K. We can see that there are subsets of R4 because each one has four entries in it. I wrote, this, uh, I wrote the entries in H vertically, so P plus 2Q, negative P, 3P minus Q, and P plus Q, where P and Q are real. And if we think back to uh, section 2.8 and 2.9, we know that as, as if we just have linear combinations of P and Q and no constants by themselves, this will make a linear, a linear, a linear, sorry, a subspace. This will be closed under vector addition, closed under scalar multiplication and contain the zero vector. For K, we see that K is the solution set to this equation, this homogeneous equation. And so that's going to give us a subspace as well. We'll be able to write both of these as the span of a set of vectors. Then we'll be able to reduce that spanning set down to a basis. So let's find a basis for each of these subspaces. For H, an element of H, we have a P plus 2Q uh, minus P, um, 3P. This looks like minus 3P. A 3P minus Q and a P plus Q. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a P vector and a Q vector. And that's how we're going to get our spanning set. So the entries, the P vector looks like one negative one, three, one, and the Q vector looks like two, zero, negative one, one. So we got a P vector and we got a Q vector. So our spanning set is one, negative one, three, and one, two, zero, negative one, one. Since there are only two vectors and one vector is not a multiple of the other vector, we can see that these two vectors are linearly independent. So a basis for H I'm not going to fit it here. A basis for H is the uh, uh, this set of two vectors. I have a question. Yes. For basis, don't we have to find the pivot. Uh, in we would if we put these vectors into a matrix, we can see where the pivots are going to be. There's going to be a pivot in the first row, first column, second row, second column. Oh, okay. So uh, the, this we have an advantage here because there's only two vectors. Since there are only two vectors, and one is not a multiple of the other. The vectors are linearly independent. So since there's only two, we can use the one's not a multiple of the other argument for linear independence. We only get to do that when there are only two vectors. As soon as, because the only linear combination of uh, one vector is scalar multiple. If we wanted to verify this, we would have to drop these vectors into a matrix. So if we made a matrix, uh, one, negative one, three, one, two, zero, negative one, one, we would find that there's a pivot in the first row, first column, and a pivot in the second row, second column. If we wanted to do that on our calculating machine, we would have to fill out our uh, 
uh, four by two matrix to a four by four matrix. So we'd have to do the reduced echelon form of one, two, zero, zero, and then negative one, zero, 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 and then three, negative one, zero, zero, oops, zero, zero. And then one, one, zero, zero. So one, two, zero, zero, negative one, zero, 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 three, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Once again, I'm adding these two extra columns of zeros because TI-84 can't reduce a four by two matrix. So we have to expand it to a four by four matrix. Putting in a column of zeros in this command is not gonna change anything that goes on in the first two. So we can see there's pivots in the fur in each column of this matrix. That tells us that they're linearly independent. The columns are linearly independent. So we can use these two vectors as a basis for H. Also notice that this basis, uh, that this, uh, the subspace H, we can also think of as the column space of this four by two matrix. But we wouldn't wanna say the column space of H because H is a subspace, not a matrix. When we say column space, the column space is a thing that applies to a matrix. So one of the things you'll notice that you, uh, I marked people off for that you'll have to correct on your test is when you said the columns of T, but T is a linear transformation and doesn't have any columns. So you're gonna to have to go and rephrase that to say the standard matrix of T has a pivot in every column, therefore T is injective. But T itself is not a matrix. Same thing here, H itself is not a matrix. We wouldn't wanna say the column space of H, that doesn't make any sense because H is an entire subspace, not a matrix. We can say that the dimension of H is equal to two. And we could say that H is a two-dimensional subspace of R4. So let's find a basis for K. K is the set of solutions to this the homogeneous equation A minus three B plus C is equal to zero. So notice that A is related to B and C, but D has nothing to do with A, B and C. So let's find a basis for, let's look at this equation. So here we have a relationship of between A, B, and C. So A is negative three B, or sorry, three B minus C. B is free, C is free. D ain't even in the equation, but it's definitely part of this. So D is its own free variable. So if we link of a solution set in parametric vector form, I'm gonna have a vector for B, for C and for D. So our solution set will be, I'll have a B vector where A is 3B, B is 1B, C and D have nothing to do with B. My C vector, A is negative 1C, B uh, is nothing to do with C, C is 1C, and D has nothing to do with C. And then I have this vector for D, which is all by itself. So I'm still just writing the solution set to a homogeneous equation. And so our basis, uh, basis for this space, uh, K,
I need my B vector, 3, 1, 0, 0. I need my C vector, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. And I need my D vector, 0, 0, 0, 1. The dimension of K is 3, because there are three vectors. So K is a three-dimensional subspace of R4. So for H, we have a two-dimensional subspace of R4, which we could think of as a plane in four-dimensional space. So H is a plane in four-dimensional in four space. K is a three-dimensional subspace of R4. So it's a three-dimensional space inside of four-dimensional space. That one's hard to picture because it's hard to picture four-dimensional space. I have a question. Yes. Um, it looks like H is a that's a call H, or I don't know how to say the the basis for the heavy. So why we don't call and null for H and K? Uh, H and K are not matrices. When we talk about the column space over the null space. The column space and the null space is something that we apply to a matrix. A matrix has a column space. H is not a matrix, so H doesn't have a column space. H doesn't have columns. H is a subspace, so there are infinite, uh, it's an entire plane in R4. There's an infinite number of vectors in it. Gotcha, thank you. These vectors only just form a basis for H. So we don't want to talk about the column space or the null space of H because H is not a matrix. We only want to talk about column space of a matrix or null space of a matrix. But if you look at H and K and say, it looks like we found a basis, uh, we thought of H as the column space of some matrix. And it looks like we thought of K as the null space of some matrix. And that is true. We wouldn't want to talk about the null space of K, but we can see that since K is a set of solutions to a homogeneous equation, K is the null space of some matrix. All right, let's pause the video here and grab some more examples.